Hi, welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure most people don't even know who the hell I am. I literally made this YouTube channel like a month ago um, and have like some subscribers, but um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jemmy Lee and today what we are going to pop what we are going to be talking about is my favorite books slash favorite authors slash favorite series of all time. This will include one Wattpad book because I know people think Wat Wattpad is full of crap, but there are some beautiful, amazing, show-stopping gems on that app. And I have read beautiful books, and this one book on Wattpad... It needs to be published. That is all I will say. I have read published works that are not as good as this Wattpad book. But that is besides the point. I went a little off topic there. The genres that I really like reading is fantasy. Um, I can read young adult and adult fantasy. I like adult contemporary. And more specifically, I do like adult contemporary romance. I will not read young adult romance or young adult contemporary. I don't know what it is about those those um, genres, but it's just never interested me. And fantasy, young adult contemporary, contemporary, and dystopian as well. So let's get started. I guess I should pick out one more book because I this has to be, you know, it has to be in there. Um, hmm. Anyways, so let's start with genre for genre. I think we're going to go for romance first because, let's be honest, that is my favorite genre. And I don't care if people think that the romance genre is trashy or whatever, like not intellectual. That's bullshit. And I honestly believe, I am a huge believer, that romance is one of the hardest genres to write about because you have a set story arc already and you already know how it's going to end. Specifically, if it is a romance book that is a romantic comedy, you already know it's going to have a happy ending. So how are you going to keep audiences engaged throughout the entire book? You need to write beautiful characters, great prose, vivid imagery, and really just really, really hone in on the banter and human connection, because that is all romance is about, and I am all about individuals connecting. So let's get started. I think, um, let's first start with the depressing romance books, because I have two and a half, okay? Two and a half, and I'll tell you what I mean by the half, but the first romance book that is depressing is It Ends With Us. Um, look up trigger warnings for this. It does cover top, top, tough topics, um, but I could not leave this out. I have not read all of Colleen Hoover's works. I have read a couple. Um, I've read this, Regretting You, and Ugly Love. I did not like Ugly Love at all. I considered it not a romance, and I considered it very, very toxic and kind of promoting really bad things in that book. Um, so yeah, I do not recommend every single one of Colleen Hoover's book, but this book I do recommend. I love it. I recommend this to all my friends who are getting into reading. It is so easy to read. Um, and it's just so beautiful. Just keep saying hi. Okay. I don't know if you heard what I said, but if you did, you'll know. Um, so yeah, in general, Colleen Hoover books are very easy to read. So if you ever want to get back and in, get into or get back into reading, I would suggest that. Another really, really popular romance is Normal People. This is the only Sally Rooney novel I've ever read as well. I do have on hold at the library um, Beautiful World, Where Are You, her newest release. Um, so I'm kind of excited to read that, but this book and the series as well are just so, so good. Once you get over, it was a little hard for me to get, to get into because there is absolutely, positively, no quotation marks in the entire book. Um, after I got past that, it's really easy to understand who exactly is talking and what they're saying. Um, but it's just such a, a, like a good book. And I was so depressed after reading this. I had a little book hangover. And I just sat there. And I was crying throughout this whole book. The only one downside about this book is if you really dislike the miscommunication trope, 
it's in there. There is miscommunication trope in this. So yeah, that's that on that. Um, the third, oh my god, I actually have three and a half I meant. So the third romance book that I really love and I thought it was so, so cute. This is a happy one. This is a happy romance book. Um, it is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I honestly, I really like this book almost solely for the purpose of the representation in it. The, the love interest, the guy, he is Vietnamese American and me being Vietnamese American, I felt very seen. Um, also, um, the representation of Stella, who is the main character, she has Asperger's, I believe it is, and I just really, really think it's such a cute book. It's kind of a gender-swapped take on Pretty Woman, because um, the main guy, he is a male escort, and Stella, she is um, the rich girl, and it also follows the insta-love type of situation, like an insta of trope. Still really cute. Super, super cute. I could not put it down. This was one of the first books I've ever read in an in one day. It takes me a long time to read. I'm, I'm a really slow reader, and I actually read this in a day, which is insane. Like, I spent, it was over 15 hours reading straight. That, where did I eat? When did I eat? I don't know. But yes, this book, great. The next romance book that is on Wattpad, very, very, a lot of trigger warnings, insane amount of trigger warnings, but if you want to read a book for free, this book is on Wattpad. It is not, it is not published, but it should be. The writing is beautiful. I think if it had an editor, it would be even, it would be a masterpiece because sometimes the author's execution of her prose gets kind of wordy and it doesn't execute correctly, but it's just such a beautiful story. It is a mafia romance, so there are kind of darker topics. There's a lot of darker topics in there. I would say there is CNC, which is consensual non-consent, but personally, I'm kind of into it. The smut in this is some of the hottest smut I've ever read, okay? It is so, so, so good. Such good smut. And it is on Wattpad. I cannot believe that this book was free. Um, it is called Beg For It by Himeros. The author is under dash H I M E R O S underscore. I believe that I keep recommending this book to all my friends as well. Um, it is just so beautiful. And the main character, Estrella, she is so strong, so powerful. Um, she has gone through so much. Remember, look up the trigger warnings. And she is a badass woman, and she knows it. And her, her son, I usually do not like kids in books, but she does have a son. He gets an exception because he is so, so cute. He is so, oh, he's the only kid that I will ever fall in love with in, in books because he is a really, really cute kid. Um, and it's just a really good book. So if you were to ever, if you don't have money to buy books, but you want to get into reading, this book, Mafia Romance, Beg For It by Humeros. Um, it's action. It has a lot. You can tell that the author really is inspired and is a really big Marvel fan because she makes a lot of Marvel, rep rep Marvel references like oh, Budapest and Captain America and all these different types of things. Sorry, there's sirens going on. Um, it has also like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith type of vibe from like all the action and enemies to lovers. It's so good. It is so good. That is all I will say for that. Beg for it. If you love that book and you want to keep going, she's making a complete series. Her second book called Kill For It is in the process of being written right now. It's around halfway done. I have been waiting on the edge of my seat every single day, refreshing Wattpad to see if Humeris has, like, updated the chapters, but that book is so... <laughs> All her books so far are super, super good with great smut, okay? So that is all of the romance 
my favorites of all time so far in my life that I can think of off the top of my head. Next, I will kind of talk about my favorite authors. Um, and that usually will have to do with fantasy slash dystopian. One of my favorite authors, not my absolute favorite, but I really loved, I don't, I cannot for the life of you because I've read this like seven to ten years ago, um, read this book. I could not for the life of you tell me what tell, tell you what happens in Unwind by Neil Schusterman. I just remember eating this shit up and loving it so, so much. He came out with a series pretty recently called Scythe. The, it's right there. Um, such great books, such great writing, and me personally going to UC Irvine. I looked up Neil Schusterman's um, Wikipedia, and he is a UCI alumni. So um, after reading that, I thought I have to support this man. He is such a great writer. This book, this series, the Unwind series, is really um, trippy. It it kind of has this eerie effect. It's uh, if you don't know what it's about, it is about kids who are not deemed. I could not for life you tell me tell you what happens. Um, they're not. There's like a second civil war fought over reproductive rights, and life is involatile from the moment of conception until you're 13. So meaning that you, like all these kids, they're not worth living, and they take the organs of these kids and put them in other people. And But the consciousness of their kids, for example, like if you cut off your arm and your arm is given away um, to somebody else who needs an arm, your arm is still working and still has its own kind of memory. And all of your different human organs and human parts still have consciousness. So you're technically alive, but in other people. It's really trippy. I don't even know if I explained that correctly, but it's a really interesting premise. It's a really good story. This book, great. This author, so far, I've only read those two series from him, but both really, really great. Um, my other obvious all-time favorite, I haven't read Night House or anything like that, but Le Bardugo, Six of Crows, great series. People give crap to Shadow and Bone, but I will be honest, when I read Shadow and Bone, I thought it was really, really engaging writing to the point where people thought it was not that great of a book or a series, but I loved the writing. I felt very engaged. I liked the series. Okay? I liked it. Some people don't like the, the original trilogy, but I did. I, it's an obvious, it's an obvious choice why this is a great author and great series. Anything Grishaverse is great. So, just kind of look up what Grishaverse is about, and yeah, if you haven't watched the show too, great casting on the show. <gasps> Such great casting on the crows and the show and everything. It's, it's great. It's great. Um, my other all-time favorite authors, read any work by her, Marissa Myers. Marissa Myers, if you do not know who she is, she did the Lunar Chronicles, which was Cinder, Scarlet, Winter, and Cress, I think it was. That was, like, the original series. She, that, the Lunar Chronicles was kind of, um, it took fairy tales, like Cinderella, Red Riding Hood, and she kind of took a really, really big spin on it and made it like, um, in a fantasy slash, is it dystopian? I think it's more fantasy. It's like a fantasy-esque world. Um, I love Marissa Myers because she also, like Leigh Bardugo, I really feel like Marissa Myers needs to be as hyped up as Leigh Bardugo because I just think that she is that incredible of a writer. She was my all-time favorite for a long time when I was all, all throughout high school. Um, and she, and the Renegade series is what got me back into reading after five years of never reading and picking up a single book. I love Marissa Myers also because she gives great diversity in her books. I'm not 100% sure if that's true, but from what I remember, um, Cinder, she's Asian, and a lot of the characters in that first book are because it's set in New Beijing, and the main character in this 
is also Filipino, I believe, and the the guy, he is black. I love the Asian representation because I can really feel like I can embody the main characters, so I love that. And yeah, just such great books if you are in a reading slump especially and you love fantasy. Anything Marissa Myers. Um, she's really, really great. She's just so, so great. And last... But certainly not least, we have another obvious choice. I don't have the first book right now. I lent it to my friend, but A Core of Thorns and Roses. This is the only Sarah J. Mass I've read, but I love this series. There's a reason why it is so popular. If you are a fan of romance, if you're a fan of fantasy, if you're a fan of a little bit of smut, um, these books are just so near and dear to my heart. They are so, so good, so engaging. They're huge, by the way. They're like six to eight hundred pages, a lot of them, but they go by so quickly. You will, it feels intimidating to read, but I promise you, it will feel like nothing reading it. It just flows so smoothly. Um, Sarah J. Mass's writing, just like all the other authors, like Lay, like Marissa Myers, it just flows, and so much stuff happens, so much action. And, you know, I will say this. A lot of people have given crap to Sarah J. Mass because... I don't know exactly why she's problematic, but I've heard over TikTok, I think over YouTube sometimes, that Sarah J. Mass is very problematic. Um, I think people said that she was like Zionist. She does not really, if you were going to read Sarah J. Mass, not a lot of diversity in her books, but you can imagine, you can imagine it diverse if you want. It could be like, oh, she's blonde. I was in my head, I'm like, is she is she blonde i don't know you know you can it, you can use your imagination to create the characters as diverse but if you, she just does, does not really have diverse characters they're very heteronormative and yeah but the thing is is personally if authors are problematic i don't want to support them i will not support problematic authors that's kind of what i talked about in the deal by l kennedy my youtube video about that but I just, for, for this series, this ate up my life and was such a big part of my life for months. And I kept thinking about the books for months of my life. And the impact it had on me was just too great for me to not support this story and these ideas. I felt like if I didn't support the work and the artistic mind of what was put into this book, I would feel like I stole something. I just, they were just such a big part of my life. And I just feel so grateful that, you know, I could go into Sarah J. Mass's head and, and read these words that came out of her head and think, holy shit, someone came up with this and someone created this couple because it is a romance that is just so like, oh, so swoon-worthy and beautiful, I couldn't not um, support it, you know? And I think when it comes to being obsessed with a certain work and being obsessed with this artistic value, when you have such a, put a big artistic value in a specific work, I have to support it. And that is me coming from I want to go into the film industry as like artists, you know, I want to support artistic work because it is work and it should be appreciated um, monetarily if, you know, it makes an impact on your life because I believe that art is one of those things that, you know, for thousands of years, it's made, it's made a really big impact on people's lives. So this book, I bought it and I, I will continue to buy them because I consider them as artistic works and doesn't have anything to do with the author specifically. Um, I think it's kind of similar to when I don't I don't know exactly who, but specific certain people will still listen to Chris Brown, you know. But you know what he did. We know what Chris Brown did, but people 
still listen to his music because they're like, well, you know, like, he... He makes good music, like, like separate the artist from, the, you know, whatever, that stuff. I will usually not give a pass, but these books were just too great to me to not support. And I love them. I do want to read Throne of Glass and that whole series, but people say that it's very mentally draining after you finish, after you finish the series. Everyone says that you're going to go into a slump because you're going to have a really big hangover um, after reading those books. So I'm going to wait until I finish my my TBR and such before I start that series. But yeah, those are kind of, as of now, some of my favorite books slash series slash authors of all time. I hope that if you've read these, please let me know what you thought. And if you've liked these authors or these series um, or these books, I don't know if you can tell I really like romance. I don't care what anybody has to say about it. It is a great genre. And thank you so much for watching. If you, if you found a book from here, from this YouTube video, please read it and share your thoughts as well. So I will see you in the next one.